For those of you that don't know me, I have been a challenger player in CFT since set 3, and I've actually spent a lot of time playing some games on PBE and watching streams. In this video, I'm going to cover a bunch of early game tips in set 9, and also a lot of the strong early game boards and what you could do to transition them into late game boards as well. Without further ado, I'll get right into the tips first, and then the strong early game boards that you could play. So basically, one main concept is the concept of an item holder. Uh, in TFT, you're trying to get to level 8, and you want to play around one of the four cost carries just because they're the most consistent to hit and they're also balanced to be the most strong in most comps however the problem is deciding how to get there you usually want to make your items with the intent of itemizing your late game carry and not your early game carry because your early game gin is going to eventually get outscaled by whatever four star unit you get in the late game so with that in mind i'll give you a quick example so azir really likes squinsus so squinsus because squinsus is so strong it basically puts all of the one cost carries that uses Gwinsu's really well in the meta. So that's what makes Kale pretty strong right now because a lot of the carries in the current meta use Gwinsu's really well, like Azir, uh, Zeri, and Aphelios. So generally, when you're playing around the Kale board, you don't necessarily want to build the item that makes Kale the strongest. You want to build an item that is flexible enough that is strong for both the user that is a one cost and also extremely strong for the late game carry you want to play as well. So Kale uses attack speed really well, transitions really well into Aphelios, uh, Zeri, and Azir. Malzahar uses AP really well, really good to transition into Azir and Kaisa and Lux. Viego uses AP really well and Titans, BT, Bruiser-ish items, which is really good on Urgot and Yasuo. And Jin uses attack speed and AD items really well, which is really good on Aphelios. Okay on Zeri because Zeri already gets a decent amount of AZ from Gunner. And it's also uh, pretty good on Yasuo as well. But that's the first concept I want to cover. So the other thing I wanted to quickly cover is just the concept of playing your strongest board. <laughs> I know in this video that I'm going to show you what I think the strongest early game boards are. So this is an example of one of the boards I'm going to show you. However, this board is absolute garbage if all of these units are one star. It basically, like for example, another board with no synergies at all, something like this. So if the two if the units are two starred uh for example this board is going to be way stronger than this board uh, i showed you because all of these units are upgraded and this is not so that's like one very simple example of why you should uh not blindly follow the comp guides and really think about what units you have on your bench to see if you can make a stronger board so two things i generally want to keep in mind a two star unit is generally better than a one star unit so for example if you get like a two star a two star I don't know, two-star Maokai or something. Maybe you want to fit it in over like one of your one-star units. If you randomly get like a four-star unit, I don't know, maybe you find something like, like a Jarvan. Even though it's not a synergy, you probably want to fit it in somehow, even if it means replacing one of your synergies. So that's the other quick thing I wanted to go over. Uh, without further ado, uh, I could finally get into the video because now you guys know not to blindly follow whatever I show you and to apply some critical thinking before you uh, force these early game boards on your own. So the first opener I'll be covering in this video is going to be the void opener. Uh, there are a couple of ways you to play the void opener. However, in most cases, your primary carry is just going to be Malzahar, simply because Malzahar is going to be the easiest unit to two star and he's also pretty consistent. And he's a great item holder for many of the premier attack speed or AP item holders late game as well. For example, Malzahar is a really good holder of Shiv. And because Malzahar is a sorcerer, it easily enables you to play into the four sorcerer mid game, which is really good to transition into a vertical sorcerer board or into something like Azir into the late game. So uh, the three main core units of Void are going to be Cho'Gath, Kassadin, and Malzahar. You generally want to play around the one cost units. So if you play Malzahar, you want a second sorcerer something like Oriana, uh, and, if you have a, and if you have a Cho'Gath, you want to play around a second Bruiser, so something like a Maokai. So this is a typical standard early game Void board. However, uh, because two of the Void units are three cost units, if you happen to get either a Rek'Sai or a Vel'Koz from an early game orb, the early game Void opener gets way stronger than this typical one. For example, if you happen to get an early game Rek'Sai, if you notice, there are two units from the Void Tree that are both Void and Bruiser. This makes it really easy to play into the Bruiser line if you're already playing Void as well. So a very standard level 5 board for Void Bruisers is just going to be playing two more Bruisers. So something like Renekton and something like a Vi, and your board is actually fucking insane because you're playing four Bruisers, your frontline is extremely tanky, and you have the extra Void uh, 
void thing to have another front line. You build something like a Sunfire to have in infinite sustain. And a board like this, if you're playing around the Rek'Sai, generally you want to itemize Rek'Sai with Bruiser-ish items. So for example, BT, Titans, uh, GS. These are really good items for Rek'Sai. And uh, one of the things you transition into from this Bruiser board, if you're item holding the Rek'Sai, is something like a Yasuo carry late game or something like an Urgot. The other variations for it is if you get a Vel'Koz early, so if you get the Vel'Koz, you generally actually want to play around four Sorcerers. So instead of going the Bruiser route, the Sorcerers in set nine are going to be something like Swain. Swain is a good frontline Sorcerer. And another Sorcerer you could play is something like a Taric. You could also additionally play something like an Orianna as well. It really just depends on what you hit. Uh, in this case, you want to make sure that you have a solid frontline because Sorcerer's main weakness is having a solid frontline. And you generally still want to itemize the Malzahar just because it's very unlikely for you to hit this two-star Vel'Koz early. But at level 6, if you decide to roll down a bit more, you could consider itemizing this Vel'Koz as well, along with playing into the multi-caster multi tree with playing something like a Sona and a Teemo. So another really insane opener that you could get in set 9 in the early game is going to be what I call the Ionia Challenger opener. Uh, so this opener revolves around three core Ionia units plus a Warwick. So the three Ionia units are going to be Irelia, Set, and Jin. Uh, Jin is especially strong if you get him to 2-star in the early game, and he's really good with stuff like IE, Hodge, he's pretty good with Gwinsu's as well. Uh, Irelia is also just a really strong unit because of her traits. She scales really well into late game because late game, there's a comp that's going around where you play um, around Ionia's and challenges. Because she's both, she just goes into the late game comp pretty well, and she's also a frontline unit. So in this comp, depending on your items, you have two approaches you could take to this early game. You could either itemize the Jin if you get a Jin 2-star. So in this case, you would go attack speed and AZ items. And you could play into the Deadeye variation where you play around a late game. I believe it's Aphelios is the late game carry for Deadeye. You could also potentially play into Zeri as well. The other variation is uh, if you decide to itemize this Warwick with Bruiser items. So let's say you don't have any AD items at all, at all, but you have a lot of these tanky attack speed items like Titans, BT, QSS. If you have that setup going, it's a really easy transition into the late game Ionia Challenger build just because Yasuo uses these items really well. So Warwick is basically the perfect item holder for Yasuo late game. Um, so basically, depending on your approach, if you're playing around the Jin. You usually just want to throw in a second Deadeye, something like an Ash, because your main carry is going to be your Jin. You want to amplify his damage as much as possible. If you don't have any items for Jin and you're playing around the Warwick instead, one approach you could do is just play around something like Four Challenger. So your board might look something like something like this instead, and you're playing around your Warwick. That's basically it for the Ionia Challenger opener. The next opener I'll be covering is going to be Piltover. Uh, Piltover is basically the set nine equivalent of Underground from set eight. It's basically going to be the trait that every single DGen with a gambling addiction is going to want to play every single game. Uh, basically, how Piltover works in set 9 is you basically get this T-Rex on your board. And basically, uh, for every lose that you suffer, the T-Rex gets a charge. And when you win the combat, you basically exchange all of, that, all of those charges for power on your T-Rex. And late game, you also have the option to sell your T-Rex in exchange for X amount of rewards, depending on how much charge the T-Rex is. So basically, there are two ways to play this opener. You could either play it the extremely degenerate way, which I don't fully recommend right now, just because we don't exactly know what the fully optimized late game boards are. So even if you get a mega cash out, you'll probably have one HP and die randomly to a super high roll board anyway. Uh, the other way is to just steadily charge up the T-Rex and make your, make the T-Rex to be a very strong unit to fit onto your late game board. But basically, the Piltover opener, it consists of four main units that you play early game. Orianna, Jace, Vi, and Echo. The problem with Piltover, like in all sets, is that two of those uh, units from the Piltover trait are three costs. So if you only start off with an Orianna and a Vi, it's going to be extremely hard for you to get the Echo and the Jace. So I would highly recommend only going for the Piltover opener if you get dropped an early game Echo or an early game Jace. However, if you do get dropped this opener, then you could proceed to play with this opener. Uh, and I think that the best early game way to play around this opener is going to be around Gunners, just because Jace is a gunner himself. You could play a board like this. Uh, you want to use Jinx as the item holder. And then late game, you want to transition this board into a late game Gunner board. 
Uh, this comp is a really easy transition into Zeri, just because you're already playing two Gunners, and you're also already playing two Zon, and Zeri is both a, a Zon unit and a Gunner, and she's also a really good uh, user of all of these AZ items that Jinx is already using. So keep in mind that Gunner, the trait, gives you a lot of AD. So you don't actually want to build items that give you excess AD like Deathblade because you're basically, the extra AD is going to be redundant. You're much better off building items that crit off that AD as well. For example, stuff like IE is good, GS is good because they all multiply off the already high base AD that you already have. But yeah, this is how I would recommend playing Piltover Opener. So the next opener I'm going to be covering in this video is going to be the Shadow Isles Rogue Opener. So in this set, uh, there are two early game Shadow Isles units, which is basically Maokai and Viego. And there are two early game Rogue units that you have access to, which is going to be Viego and Zed. So these three are going to be the core of this uh, early game board. And for a second tank unit, since you're missing some frontline, you just play something like a random Poppy. So if you manage to hit two-star Poppy, two-star Maokai, two-star Viego, the board is pretty good. Uh, Viego uh, uses AP items decently, as you can see here. He's also really good with bruiser items as well. So for example, Titans, Gunblade, Gwyn's uses good on him as well. Um, Viego is a very highly uh, attack speed auto-based champion, surprisingly, as opposed to in set 8. So when you're playing this opener, you have this option to reroll for Viego and Maokai. So for example, if you get like a lot, if you get like five or six Viegos, and you haven't uh, spent any uh, gold on EXP yet, you could proceed to roll down or slow roll at level five for Maokai three and Vigo three. And this will enable you to fast eight and play around a Gwen late game board instead. Usually when you're playing Vigo, your late game is almost always going to be around Gwen. If not, if you're playing Vigo as an item holder for a bruiser as well, you could also transition uh, Viego into a late game bruiser carry, something like an Urgot or a Yasuo. But generally, Gwen is the standard uh, late game uh, transition from this from this spot. The other option, if you don't reroll for three star Viego and three star Maokai, is you could consider rolling a bit at level six to hit a very strong mid game power spike, and your board will end up generally looking something like this. Uh, in this variation, uh, instead of itemizing the Viego because Viego is only two star, you actually want to itemize around the Katarina. Uh, Katarina is really a pretty strong unit at level 6 and usually there is this comp going around where you end up going for 3 star Echo and 3 star Katarina. In this case you would just go about itemizing the Katarina with the standard uh, backline AP assassin items, stuff like uh, Spark is really good, uh, Hodge is good, JG is good, Death Cap is good. And if you go this variant, you after you 3 star the Echo and the Katarina, Late game, you can proceed to fit in something like a Gwen as well to round out your synergies. Opener I'm going to cover in this video is going to be Demacia. So Demacia in set 9 consists of uh, three main early game units. It's going to be Kale, Poppy, and Galio. Uh, the other Demacian unit is going to be Garen. However, since Garen is a 3 cost, it's a lot more unlikely for you to play around the Garen. So you can mostly consider these three units instead. And without having a 2-star Poppy and a 2-star Kale, this opener is not that good just because without the two-star Poppy, your front line is going to be weak. And without the two-star Kale, you're just not going to have enough damage. So I would only look into this opener if you hit these two-star units. So because you lack front line, you want to round out your synergies with the Maokai. And because you're playing around the Kale, you really do want a second Slayer. Something like a Zed or a Kale or, or a Kled will be really good to amplify your backline damage. So one cool thing about Kale is you actually sometimes want to play Kale for the entire game. This is because uh, when you're playing this opener, you generally want to play into vertical Demacia. So you're going to have seven Demacia and you end up giving three of your strongest Demacias an extra full item, which basically gives you a lot of power to your Kale, especially since Kale is a unit that scales with your tactician level, which is pretty cool to be honest. The other option you have uh, instead of playing vertical Demacia is instead if you just use Kale as an item holder. Now, as I said before in set nine, uh, Gwyn's use is probably one of the most flexible items in set 9 just because every late game AD carry uses Gwyn's use. For example, Zeri uses Gwyn's use pretty decently, uh, Philios uses Gwyn's use pretty well, and especially Azir uses it really, really well. So if you notice, Kale really likes these three items. Actually, surprisingly, the exact same items are going to be extremely powerful on Azir as well. So if you don't want to play into a vertical Demacia late game, and, or if you just manage to hit like a random a 0 or 2 at your level 7 or 8 rolldown, feel free to sell off this scale and pivot into the Shurima board instead. So this sums up my set 9 early game strongest boards video. 
uh if you guys are wondering what comp you want to transition into late game i actually also released another video that summarizes all of the late game comps for set nine as well so you could use these two videos in conjunction to get a fully fleshed out early to late game transition uh, if you guys enjoyed this video i would really appreciate it if you guys subscribe to my youtube channel or considering following me on twitch my twitch is it's Kema. and that's all i'll see you guys next time